In this video, we're going to take a continuing look at applying materials and textures. So we were looking at our UVs and we were able to do a UV snapshot and save out our UVs to a separate image. I'm just going to pop that open here. And we can see here's my UV shell and this is the actual output that Maya will give you when you choose that UV snapshot. So we bring this into Photoshop, we paint, and we end up with something like this. Here are all the individual pieces that are based upon those UV shells, but parts of the crow. You can see here's the head, the eye, feathers for the wings, here's the body, etc. This is perfectly positioned with those UV shells. So now inside of Maya, I'll go full screen here in the hypershade. I can now load my texture, that image I painted, and drop that in to the color channel here. And that will then use those UVs from my model. So we're going to click on the Create Render Node icon button there, which is the little checkerboard. And that brings up our Create Render Node window. And what we need to do is add a file. And what we're doing is adding a file node to the color channel. So it's going to just make this connection. Notice the other things that we can add here. We could add a checkerboard pattern, a mountain, noise, a movie, all sorts of different things inside of here. But what we really like to do is to be able to have full control over our maps. By doing that, it allows us to paint whatever it is we want. So in that case, we use a file node so that I can load a separate file. So now that loads up. I get a blank screen here, basically because there is nothing being loaded in this. You can see here's my file node. Notice my anisotropic material is now completely black. It's waiting for an image. And that's what we just have to drop in right here. So I'm going to click the folder icon and we'll search for our crow. There it is right there. And we'll choose open. My material viewer shows me a sample of what that texture is. And if I click back on my material, it'll also show me the texture map to that object. And again, these are just the default objects that Maya represents here. But at the same time, this is also affecting our model. So let's click back. We'll go full screen here with our perspective. To actually see the texture, I want to hit six on the keyboard. And that's going to load up that texture. And now my crow has all his feathers. So the real trick with this is getting those UVs to be laid out properly. But once we have that material on there, you can see that we can modify lots of different things. And I'm going to break the material viewer out there just so that we have a bit more space. Let's just bring up the attribute editor. And we'll select our material. Even though we're not in the hypershade, we can still see the anisotropic node. It's just like any other node. And then I can go in and play with these channels. We have a transparency channel that will eventually make my crow disappear. Ambient color and incandescence, we're not going to notice too much here. And we don't really use these a whole lot, although incandescence possibly. It all just depends on the type of effect. But we also have translucency. And of course, that specular shading, which controls that anisotropic material. And we can change the color of a lot of these things as well. So if I wanted to make it red for whatever reason, you can see that they're on the material. Now, I'm not really seeing it on my model because I don't have any lights in the scene. So we're not picking up that specular highlight. But that's OK. That's why we get that sample swatch that we have right there. I'm just going to undo that. We don't want that color. So lots of different attributes inside of here. The ones that we mainly use is going to be that color channel and also a bump channel, which will give it the illusion there is an actual roughness to the surface itself. 